bulletins, if you would, that, would fill that out for us, please, we would appreciate it. This morning we are kind of doing things a little different because of uh, a baptism and the, the roll call uh, victorious. And so just, just uh, bear with us as we try to do things different, a little differently this morning. But let us stand and give praise to the Lord. We have the, whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was going to go that loud. We have the great, you can be seated. We have had the song, This Is I'll Fly Away. And it tells us that we have a home in heaven, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. And so we give thanks to the Lord. And today is what we call All Saints Sunday. And we remember those who have gone before us. And so... With that, let's remember the, those that have gone. Today, we remember the saints, ordinary and extraordinary ones, those in our family, those that we have known in our church, those who have gone before us. Today, we remember the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, remarkable acts of fearless ones, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice of parents, we remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessings of his spirit. We remember his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us give praise and thanks to God. Amen. And so, for our roll call, and those that are here with family, you are invited to take a candle if you would like at the end of the service. The following members have joined the church triumphant in this past year. 
William Stacy Hall. Tom Hunter. Peggy Kettner. Gary McDonald. Christine Black. Carolyn Aiken. Fred Booth. Lester Les Halsey. Doris Clark. James Jim Scarrett. John Bebout. Christy Dunbar. Tom Myers. David Evans. Callie Harmon. Richard K. Ken Furman, Tom Emmerich, Dorothy Fink, Jackson Vanessa, and Paul Reed. Let us pray. Living God, in whom there is no shadow or change. We thank you for the gift of life eternal and for those who have served you well and now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints remembered and forgotten, for those dear souls most precious to us. Today we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered into glory. We bless you for their life and love and rejoice for them and their witness. God of Jesus and God, mindful of all those cho choice souls who have gone on ahead of us, teach us, each this 21st century disciple of every race and place, to follow your example to the best of our ability, to feed the poor in body or spirit, to support and to comfort the mourners and repent the repentant, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crisis, to affirm those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers. Let us clearly recognize what it means to be called the children of God and to claim the healing wholeness of Christ Jesus, our Savior. And all the people said, Amen. Those of you that are here with loved ones that have passed, at the end of the service, again, you are welcome to take a candle. Let us now go into a, another praise song.
As we celebrate the life of those who have gone before us, we also celebrate new life. It's the circle of life as it comes. So this morning, we are going to have a baptism of Briley Meredith Palmer. So would um, those who would like to come forward are welcome to come forward. and face the congregation. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Here she goes. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into Christ's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is a gift of God offered to us without a price. I present Riley Meredith Palmer. This is her. On behalf of the whole church, I'm going to ask you these questions. And um, do you renounce the spiritual forces do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, answer, we do. 
We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they are present? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people of ages, nations, and races? If so, answer, we do. We do. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church? You can put her down. She's fine. In Christ's holy church, by your teachings and the example that she might be guided to accept God's grace for herself and to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life, if so, answer, we will. We will. To you, Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. If so, answer, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in and Amen. Let us join together in professing the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, excuse me, do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? If so, say, we do. We do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended to the dead, and on the third day rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. If so, answer, we do. We do. She does too. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? If so, answer, we do. We do. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And then you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, and you led them to the freedom through the sea. And their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your spirit to bless this gift of water and the one who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. Amen. And as we do the baptism, we light a candle. And this will be one that she can have throughout and, and celebrate on birthdays and light to remember that you are the light of the world because God loves you and created you. One of you want to hold the bowl? Okay. The water we are using does have some water from the River Jordan and it is in here to symbolize the, the baptism of Jesus as well as your baptism, okay? Is it okay? Yep, you, you can put your hand in and feel it if you want. Do you want to feel it? Here. There. Yeah, 
our water is one of those great things. Yes, and it's nice and warm too. Now, I'm going to put some water on your head, okay? Is that all right? Daddy will hold you and I'll put some water on. You can do it too. <laughs> She's fine, except her little sweater's getting wet. That's okay. There we go. Riley Meredith, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You're doing it right, sweetheart. Yeah. That we should all play in the love of God. Yeah, good job. Yeah, there you are. So we are thankful that she is a part. Let us pray. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through the water and the Spirit, that you may be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people respond, amen. Now it's our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you're incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of Christ's holy church. Will you, will you come to me? Okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, congregation, we welcome Riley and welcome her. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. These are all your family now, okay? All right, your aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas, extra, extras. May the Lord bless you, amen. Let me give you the certificates. And one of the things that the church does is that they have a quilt that has been made for her as well. Let us pray. O oh God of us all, we thank you that you love us and care for us. We thank you and praise you for those that have gone before us. We thank you for their witness that reminded us of how much you loved them and how much they loved you and reminds us that you love us. Lord, we thank you as in the end, there's a beginning. And we thank you for new life and hope and promise, not only in the life to come, but life here as well, Lord. We ask that you be with those families that have lost loved ones and comfort them. Although we rejoice that their loved ones are, are with you, hearts still break here. And so, Lord, we ask that you heal the broken hearts that you will hold them in your arms and that they might feel your comfort. And Lord, we thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. We also come and, and we ask, Lord, that in the midst of all of this, that you will help us to let our light shine so that others will see your good works, that our lives might be a witness to others that they will see that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you, Lord, for your hope and your promise. We come, Lord, lifting up those that need your healing touch, whether it's physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And we know, Lord, that you are with them. Lord, we again ask that you be with our world, 
that it might know your gift of peace and might know, might know your love and that we might be able to treat one another as neighbors, truly as neighbors. Lord, we thank you for the many things that you have given us. And we pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verses 2 through 11. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near beth Aven, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the army will have to go up against I. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up, but they were routed by the men of I, who killed about thirty-six of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there until evening. The elders of Israel did the same, and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this, and they will surround us and wipe our name out from the name of the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, Stand up! What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Oh, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we start this, this sermon of, about Joshua, we have been reading this book and following that along, and we found out about how Joshua tore down the, the walls of Jericho and how they were able to do it by being obedient and by listening and by doing what God had called them to do. Um, and so in the process, they didn't fight at all. They blew the trumpets. They took God with them and realized their, their need to have God with them and had God there to help them win the battle. And it was by the ram's horns and the cheering of the people on the seventh day that the walls of Jericho came down. But as they were told to go in, to the town of Jericho to take it over, they were told, do not take anything. Don't take anything. Now, the people of Israel are like we. They're tempted. They fall short. They covet what others have. And although most everybody listened, one person didn't. They sinned. They didn't follow what God had, had put before them. And so, 
in the sin, there was repercussions. So they had this next city, AI, that they were supposed to go ahead and get, and it was supposed to be easy. Have you ever had one of your sports teams that they were supposed to have an easy game, and they got there, and it wasn't easy? In fact, maybe they even lost. Did you watch the Buckeyes yesterday? Okay. Then you've seen that, where it was supposed to be easy, but they got there, and they got to AI, and the they got destroyed. They said, you don't need to take the whole army, you only need to take 3,000, and it'll be fine, but they were destroyed. And so, in their sin and in their questioning, they didn't know, um, Joshua didn't know what really had happened, but something had happened that caused that, it separated them from God. That's what sin is, something that separates us from God. And so, in that, they were there, and Joshua is now beside himself because what was supposed to be easy was not. What was supposed to work didn't. What the plan was, was gone. And so, he is laying down at the Ark of the Covenant, yelling out to God, Why did you do this to us, Lord? You could have just left us in Egypt, or you could have left us in the desert. You didn't have to bring us to the promised land to kill us. Why did you do all of this? And he goes on and on. Well, I think we kind of get in that spot at times, too. We are in places that we think, why, Lord? It wasn't as easy as I expected it to be. It was supposed to be easy, and it was hard. But what God does is he tells Joshua, get up, get up, stand up. And tells him what has happened, the sin that has occurred. And so the rest of the story tells, God is telling Joshua that he is to take all the 12 tribes of Israel, they take them in one at a time, then if you have to go through each family, take them in one at a time till you find out who committed the sin and this is what happened. Now, in that process, the people of Israel were not without sin. Are we? No. We aren't without sin as well. But God knows even when we think we've hidden it. God's all-knowing. God knew that this one person had taken away some of the gold that was supposed to go in honor of God. And so our all-knowing and all-serving, all uh, seeing God says, let's, let's find this out. So sin separates us, and even the sin of one person makes a difference. It made the difference for his family, for him, for the whole tribe for all 12 tribes of the Israelites. Sin has made a difference for them. And sometimes we think that we can do a sin and nobody will ever know it. And I wonder if that's what the person who sinned, who took the things, thought about, I'm taking this, nobody saw me. I can just hide it, and he did. He buried it, the story, read the rest of the story. The rest of the story tells you that he hid it underneath the ground of his tent. He buried it. He thought, nobody will find it, nobody will see it, but the all-knowing God knew. Now, have you ever had anything that you thought you were hiding? And you thought, oh, nobody knows. In the first service, I shared with them that one of the things when we get to heaven that I... I've always heard that when we get to heaven, we have the things that we love the most, and we get to do the things we love the most. And so I'm waiting for the heavenly banquet with the best rich doc chocolate cake that has no calories. I, I, I'm waiting for the banquet. I'm just waiting. But in that kind of brings me back to where I was, and we've had just Halloween within the last few weeks, and um, 
Jimmy Kimmel, I don't know if any of you ever watched Jimmy Kimmel, he plays, tells parents to play this terrible joke on kids, and he tells them to go to your children and tell them you've eaten all their Halloween candy and then to record how they respond. Um, and most of them are cry. It's not, it's not a very nice thing, but still I've watched it, okay? So um, maybe that's one of my sins. All right, mark that one in. But in our house with Halloween candy when the kids were little, we would kind of let them go off and do other things. I more, I, I was the one that was worse than Jeff, I will admit. But you would think, they have so much candy, they aren't going to miss if I take this one piece, and they don't really like it anyway. And so you take it out of their pumpkin and eat it while they're not around. And don't you know those little ones would come later and say, somebody ate this piece of candy. I said, but you didn't even like it. No, but I was counting it. I know it was right there. Those little boogers would know exactly when you would take it. Well, if they know, just think of something like candy. Just think of what God knows about us. And God knew. And God still knows. He knows all about us. But yet God still claims us as his children. And he loves us. And he loved us enough to say they need help. In those days, when you had a sin like this, what happened was after the man confessed his sin, he was taken to the valley and they stoned him. And not only did they stone him, but they stoned his family. And I guess that was to show that your sin doesn't just affect you, it affects others. It has far-reaching ways that it goes out. And, and it was known, and so people knew then that they weren't going to disobey what God had said under fear of death. But God looked at that, and God saw that. And said, mm, this isn't right. I love my children. There needs to be hope and promise. And so, God sent his son Jesus to take on the sins of the world, to take on our personal sins, and offer us forgiveness to give us a chance to start anew, to let those things that are hidden, that we think are hidden, he takes them and, and he asks us to tell them out publicly to him, even though he knows, confess our sins, accept him as our Lord and Savior, and have a new life and a new beginning, and go forward. And even when we fall short and make mistakes, we don't have to hide it, we can confess it and try to live our lives like Jesus and know that because he loves us, because he loves us. We want to live our lives as he has lived, with love and hope and promise. And when Jesus took away the sins of the world, it gave us eternal life. This all goes in circle with where we are today. For those who have gone before us and believed in Jesus, they're in heaven. Those who have been ill are, are healed. Those who had pains and sorrows, those are gone. Those who hungered and thirst for righteousness have found it. Their heavenly home is one that we are told that is full of richness and glory and hallelujahs and praising and wholeness. So you see that once we go from this earthly home, when we go to our heavenly home, we are able to be freed from all of those things that earth has held us to, and we are free to be who God created us to be. And the promise is that if we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we will see those who have gone before us. We will be reunited. I saw a picture recently of, of All Saints Day, and it showed 
all kinds of people there welcoming, welcoming in those who were coming and the rejoicing, the rejoicing that would be there. The rejoicing is great, but the forgiveness, ah, the forgiveness, God gives us that to say, I forgive you. You have a chance to start over. You have a chance to be new and follow me and follow where I take you. For I give you hope and promise and a future. Today we have baptism, which also gives us that hope and promise in the future. God didn't bring us this far to leave us alone. He didn't bring us this far to fail. He brought us this far to live life and to have it to the fullest and have it to abundantly. Will it always be how we think it should be? Probably not. I always find that when I plan things out and think, okay, I have my life totally planned. I'm going to do this at this time and this at this time and this at this time. God just kind of laughs. Because it's not on my time schedule, it's on a God's. And God says, I, I know better. And sometimes I'm like Joshua. I get upset about that and go, why? But again, I hear, trust me. Love me. Follow me. So today, we have come to celebrate the full circle of God's love for us on this earth and on the life to come. And we are thankful. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you know us and you still love us in spite of our sins. Help us to confess them to you so that we might be healed. You already know them. There's no reason for us to hide them. And you still love us. Help us to accept the gift of forgiveness and new life and hope that you promise through Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. And through Jesus Christ, we are given life and hope. I heard um, the other day that there are, we are like the, the story too of that we have slavery to sin, that the, the Israelites were in slavery, so they, we have that slavery to sin because they were slaves in Egypt. And so that's when we're stuck there and in and, and our sins. And then the next time is that we're in the wilderness and we're wandering. And our lives can be like that as well, that we wander through time. But the next part is the promised land when we make our commitment to Christ. And we're there and we live and it goes on for the rest of our earthly lives and our heavenly lives. It's eternity. And it comes through the body and the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was crucified, he took on the sins of the world. He took on our sins. And he was trying to tell this to his disciples before his crucifixion when they shared that last meal together. And in the last meal, they had the bread the Passover, they took it and he asked for blessing upon it and he broke it and he said, this is my body that's broken for you and for many. And after the meal, he took the cup. He asked blessing to be upon it and then he said, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink from this. And so he gave them the cup and he gave them bread and he said, when you take the cup and you eat from the bread, do this in remembrance of me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. 
For Christ came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him would be saved. The saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is offered to us in a relationship that is given to us. And as we take Holy Communion, we do that to remember, remember that he loves us. Remember that he forgives us. Remember that he is with us now and will be with us forever. Remember. So we take the bread. And eat. And know that it was Christ's body broken for us. We take the cup and we drink. This is to remind us of his blood shed for us, the forgiveness of sins, of life everlasting. So come, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Fill us with your power. Make us at one with you, one with each other, and one with the world until Christ comes again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing together our closing hymn.
what a day of rejoicing it will be when we all see Jesus. Go in his name. Go knowing that he loves you. Go knowing that he knows everything about you and he still loves you. What a gift. Gift of grace, a gift of love, and a gift of hope. Go in his name. Amen.